son of a witch crafting. We are experimenting with different ways to take what goes on here because the social things we do and the informational sharing stuff we do, I really like to open up to. I counsel people all over the country. I'd like to share it to them. I'd like to keep um, the rituals that we do, uh, you know, sacred for us, but in these more open forums. The camera does not pick up the whole room, so if anybody would rather not be on camera, that's fine. Do you know what I mean? There's no preference either way for me. Everyone's uh, discretion is their own. But there's a camera there, and it's pointed here at this point. So um, for our trial run, if we make complete fools of ourselves, it is myself and my mentors <coughs> and my friend, and fear not, guys. Uh, but uh, for something a little different to shift the energy, um, I'd like to start out this time uh, with a prayer, if that's fine with everybody. Uh, something very universal, and I think we are positioned close enough that we tend to circle up in hand, and we shouldn't have to stand, but it is thumbs to the left. Mother God is Father God, we ask that you be here with us this evening, and thank you for bringing us together to share our information, wisdom, learn from each other, to grow and ascend together. Thank you for this sense of fellowship, community, acceptance, non-judgment, and the place that we can graciously receive here. In the name that is all holy, blessed, and sacred, blessed be in honor. So welcome to Sacred Circle, guys. Um, we usually start out with a brief introduction so we all feel like friends. We'll go around the room and say our name, share as much or as little about yourself, your level of interest, your level of experience, what kind of brought you here today as you want. Um, just what you're comfortable with is fine. And I always start to break the ice so I don't have to make anybody else do that. I am Morgana, Amy, and this is my place and kind of my dream coming true. I feel very, very blessed, and I love the energies that have been exchanged and brought into here. I'm super excited to be here, and I feel super blessed that all of you have joined me. And I will hand, I'm a witch, so I like to do things clockwise when we're invoking. So I'll pass it to my friend. Okay, I'm Arjay. Um, I'm a good friend of Amy as well as sure. Um, I have a practicing with for about 10 years. And I'm here just to meet people and learn more about the whole with experience and ritual. Thank you, RJ. We love having you every time. Now pass it to you, as much or as little as you want to share. No pressure. Uh, I'm Carly. Uh, I, I've been here once before, and it was really fun. So, so I couldn't be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ryan, and uh, Carly invited me here this evening. But I've had an interest in occultism, spirituality, and just things of an esoteric nature for many years. I had heard talk of this shop opening here in Flint and was planning to check it out eventually, but she told me about this event tonight, so I decided to come along. Awesome. I'm really glad that you come to join us. Right. Congratulations um, on, uh, you know, opening your place. It's not always as glamorous as it's cracked up to be. <laughs> really? <laughs> I would have never noticed. <laughs> never! Oh, my sister stepped in just in time. You're next in the circle to tell oh. us who you are. <coughs> Um, Who's your daddy and what does he do? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's retired now. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tracy and I'm um, excited to be here. I finally got to make it on a Friday again. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. We usually got you on Lockdown Tuesday for our belly dance workout. Sure. And Thursday, we usually got you for awesome meditation. It's awesome to have you back on Friday. Glad to be back. back. I thought belly dancing was on Wednesday. No, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. 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 Tuesday, 6.30 to 7.30. Oh, I'm on that block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We don't have anything on Wednesday as of yet. Oh, we're working on something. My name's Annette. I am uh, a solitaire, and this is my first group. And I wanted to uh, bring my grandson because he's really interested. And it's better to learn in a group than a family. Setting. Awesome. So here you go, buddy. Yeah, we're super happy you came in and super happy that you brought him. One of my biggest problems with people who who followed metaphysical paths is that it's always kind of something where they are made to feel they need to separate their children. It's an adult event. But I, I live the Wiccan path, and I was born this way, and I raised my children this way. I believe that whatever your faith is, spirituality is a family affair. And having that support and that exchange is super important. It takes a village to raise a child. Yes, you know, and fellowship is important in that regard. He's the one out of the four that shows the most interest. My girls are so real scared. <coughs> There's nothing to be scared about. You've lived with me all your life. Right. You know, so uh, that's why they're scared. <laughs> so, the handsome grandson of Annette, it's your turn to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Andrew, first time here. Don't really know what else to say. That oh, is funny. Well, I was having heart surgery Monday. We would like blessings. I need a group blessing well, for my boy. We have him this here. This is his second surgery. We have him here. I, I know without even asking that I can count on Grandmaster and my mentor, and we will do some hands on healing and send some energy. Oh, he's going to be awesome. It's going to be here great. Tomorrow. Done it once, we can do it again. Absolutely, you've already won. So he has no worries. Yeah. All right, my darling, with our little mascot. Yep, she my name is Clarissa. Uh, this lovely young lady is Taco Bella. You will see her at every circle and whenever uh, Master Dragon and I are here. And she makes the rounds to whoever's got a cookie, <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps needs needs a little extra puppy love. So she's our sweetheart. Does, does great in circle. Clarissa is, is one of our regulars that lends her energy and her strength and her compassion to this place all the time. So she's a super important part and so is our little bag. So all right, sweetie, it's your turn. Um, I'm Rachel and uh, first time being here too. And um, I just wanted to see what it's like because I've had a lot of psychic things like through my life, like psychic like dreams and stuff like that. So I just want to see if this could help out even more. Well, they're very, very natural occurrence, and acknowledging them and exchanging information with other people that work on that same vibe will always bring you to clarity, even if it helps just bring you there yourself instead of somebody giving you an answer. So I'm super glad that you're here, Rachel. I'm Francine. I'm the proud mother of Rachel. Um, I've been um, involved in paganism and Wicca for about a little over 15 years, closer to 18 now probably, years or something by. But um, I'm just here to connect with the group. There's only so much you can do on your own. It's that fellowship aspect, you know. I, I practiced strictly with only blood family members for so long, and as much as I love my faith, I was very lonely. Do you know what I mean? So I love the connectivity and I love the freedom to be able to move back and forth. <coughs> Francine will never tell you because she doesn't blow her own horn, but she is one of the artists that's featured here in the store, and she's exceptionally talented. So you make very, sure you take very a much so. at her work as you head out. So thanks for coming down. And Davina. Oh, I stole your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> my name is she's like... My name is Davina, and... For those of you that don't know, I am a transgender, and my wife and I have been doing a lot of talking about it these last few weeks, and I just notified my doctor, she's going to get the resources and start checking out for us, for me to go through the surgery, because we're fighting a battle right now with Social Security, and I want to change things, so I have to make a choice. So we're moving into that direction, and this is my lovely wife, Mary. We've been married 16 years, going on 17 years, and we're wedding thoughts. Okay, I'm Mary. 
And like Davina said, we started a group with Amy Salt here at the start our fourth Saturday of the month called Taffy, Transgender, Allies, Friends, and Family and Youth. And all the LBGs are welcome here to come in. And we'll try to help them find resources they need or at least point them in the right direction. And if you guys want to come just to hear what we discussed, And we did find one issue we're working on right now. I'm writing letters to senators get the social security change that um, they force transgender who wants to be now just female, they have to go through the surgery. Not all transgenders can afford it to go through the surgery. I think it's foolish to force somebody to choose to do damage to the physical body through unnecessary surgery. Okay, your turn, Nick. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm just here to gain knowledge and just be. Be a blur. Right. <laughs> and you can step out of the shadows for a while. No. <laughs> okay, Mr. No Shoes. Tell them who we are. My name is Frank. I'm also known as the Twisted Wizard. And if you're not careful, I will make you think. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my name is Frank. I have a headache. So. <laughs> and my lovely daughter. I'm Hope We Are Baby. I'm Jessica Jade Hope Moonwater. Um, I'm really uh, energy sensitive. Um, I've been learning a lot, like different things, like been happening to me. You know, like oh, this is just how many ghosts you have in your house, just so you know. You know, stuff like that. Um, I've been studying witchcraft for like a year now. Uh, that's my mom in spirit. She took me in. You know, she's great, and she's the one that brought me to the store. So, really blessed. Dark Angel. I'm Kyle Beast. I am a healer. I'm a reader. Um, really became more of this place. Came here looking for help and guidance, and they've done more than that. It's now a real close family of mine. Love them all to pieces. And looking really just to keep expanding my knowledge and what I can do, because a lot of stuff I can do, and I just don't know what it is yet. So we're glad you're here. And we have missed you. Tell yes. Me where. I'm James. I haven't been here for a few weeks now. A little bit of financial constraints, but you know, well, I guess I'm eclectic, pagan, Wiccan, don't like labels too much. I have a lot of beliefs and glad to be here. Glad to have you. I missed you, man. My name's William. Um, pretty random myself. I'm just mostly here to listen, observe, and pick up on things. Welcome back. We haven't seen you in a minute, sweetie. I'm glad you're here. My darling, you told me you couldn't make it last week. I'm glad you're back. Let them know. Let, let them know who you are. I'm Sharmisha, and I'm a practicing pagan and a witch. I've been interested in crafts since pretty much when I was a teen, but I had to kind of do it in secret because I was living with my grandparents at the time, and they're strict conservative Christians. Raised up in Southern Baptist. So, I kind of had to do it in secret until when I started getting me an apartment of my own. Now I'm free to do whatever I want. Yay! <laughs> I love you, Sharisha. And one of our newer returning friends we're happy to see. I'm Amy. Um, this is my first group. I don't really know what to say. I've got a whole... Um, in spirit, this is my sister. She's the one that brought me to meet all of you guys. Um, I'm a paranormal investigator. I've been one for about 10 years. I'm a master healer, massage therapist. So if you guys have any questions, I've done radios. I'm in the process of writing a book. Yes, you are. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> she gave me the go ahead for it. Um, I'm just here to finally find a group that I like. And, uh, learn about every one of you guys and learn more about myself. And I'm sure you'll see my kids flying around in here somewhere. They're out in the hall. So if you hear Is screaming. Is the baby here? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! So if you hear kids screaming and I have pictures of her sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I think, oh, she's so cute. You let them keep their brooms while they're in here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the one's always got his. Patrick, the oldest, he's always on the broom. And believe it or not, God bless him. Ever since we were here, for the psychic fair, we came home that night, and I don't know if he brought it back with the rock 
or if we brought it back from Katie's house. He found the rack? Yes. No. Mysteriously, the darn thing fell you out of the pocket. You searched it. Yes. Yeah, and it came, I it came out of the washing machine when I was washing wow. the clothes. And we've had an unwanted visitor since unwanted? then. Unwanted? Yes. And he's scaring Patrick. Persistent. Oh, like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we can't get rid of them, so bring him in here. <laughs> <My boy. laughs> Follow because he he kept the kid up the other night for almost all night and was making him do things to get my attention because I told him to get the hell out. And yeah, yeah, it was almost to the point where I got freaked out because even my husband was like, "What the hell?" Like he seemed like he was possessed in a way. But he was making them, I wasn't, <coughs> but the things he was doing, I was just like, okay, what did we bring home from that shop? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what did Amy. you bring home? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, she's was... super, Amy. I haven't worked with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that cool. I'm just a Yeah, but Amy. she's close. Yeah. I wish she's too close she's to super. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, my husband's like, it's one of the rocks that you brought back. That's and I'm like, well, we'll. Well, we'll there is a weird story behind that rack because we searched high and low and yep. he thought he lost it. And we even searched the shop later to see if we could find it yeah, for him. Yeah, about what, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Or two weeks after I called Does her. Does he have it with him tonight? No, I was going to bring it, but I left it at home. Okay. I should have brought it. Yeah. What kind of stone is it? What was it? It was a moon. It was a red one. It was a quartz it? or something. No, yeah, it was. It was a red one. It was it was a, I can't one. remember. Tiger eye? No, 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 it wasn't tiger eye. It was, a cord. it was I got the watermelon quartz and then he picked it off of the shelf and I can't remember what it was. But yeah, we had everybody searching, I think, mm -hmm. that day that I was here looking for it. You shook him out. Yeah, we know, checked his really pockets. Wanted their rock. We were disappointed. She checked his pockets. I we checked his pockets. pockets three or four times when we got back to her house, and then I was doing the laundry and it was in the dry in the washing machine. And I was like, You what? wanted to make sure it went home with you. Hell. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if something was attached to it or what, but he was talking to something out in the hallway uh -huh. the whole time we were here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it could be just this building. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, it very well could be because there's that, a lot of that artwork in here. is imported from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff they had down in Bargain Hunters, like they had decorative double ornate doors, eight, nine hundred years old that are just, you know, for decoration, not to function as doors anymore but some of them I would walk by and, and the vibration of energy right. coming off it would almost uh, make my eardrum hurt on whichever side was facing them. This stuff is from all over the world. Thailand. Right. So you never know. Yeah. <laughs> the whole basement is full too. Paranormal galore. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind going to other people's houses. Stay the hell out of my house. Oh, yeah. I lived in a haunted house. It was not cool, and I did not, not feel good. I got little ones. No. Oh, thank you. So, and your sister in spirit. Oh, I got you wearing coffee. Sorry. I'm Katie. Um, I knew I knew I was going to say until you, know, you got to me. Um, I'm here because I love it here. There's a lot of energy, and I feel very welcome here. Sorry I missed the last couple of weeks, but I broke some ribs. I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, I'm a seer, I'm a reader of past lives and people from the past of this life. I'm also a paranormal investigator. Um, <clears throat> I know you from high school. Yes. You. So it was nice to see your face again. You probably don't remember me. You look and familiar, but I... I had blonde hair then. Okay. <laughs> so it probably changes a lot. Blonde 80s hair. Yeah, blonde 80s hair. <laughs> and I know how you feel. I was a minister's daughter, so I had to keep all that mm -hmm. secret. And it was very hard for me. So she's very lucky she has you. Mm -hmm. Because when I was very young, I could see, and it very scared me. And of mm -hmm. course, when I told my dad, I was possessed. So you're lucky you have her. And a group that you can come and talk mm -hmm. to. My grandparents just keep telling me I'm going to be going to hell and that I'm going to be joining Satan and stuff. Tell them I'll see you. Tell them you'll save them the spot. If you believe in Satan, you'll be fine. My mom said to me, because my new tattoo has like a pentagram in it, and she was like, the devil knows now that you have a tattoo with a pentagram in it. And he's going, yes, yes, yes. And I'm like, okay. You are crazy, girl. Yeah. Well, we are glad to have you ladies. I'm glad you're feeling better, Katie. And boy, we'll, hopefully we can figure out what's going on with your little fun, eh, Mom? So, 
And that brings us to our brother. Mine. True. Yeah, you. I, I didn't say true. Oh. <laughs> My name's Tom. Been on the path since the late 80s. And I'll be up. Short bio today. Mm -hmm. Short bio today. I'm uh, Grandmaster Dragon. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, hand brush, oh. No, <laughs> and I love this man. He's my friend. I'm David, and I am so glad to see everybody and the people that have been coming back. I'm also very, very pleased to see younger people here, because as Amy knows, I anguished for a long time. I've been in the craft a long time. I've earned the gray hair and lost years. hair. And I, it feels like 50 years, honest to God. And I really did. I worried whether another generation was coming. And they are, because I see them come into the store, and I'm glad. I'm glad they're here. They're important. Mm -hmm. I'm Dragon. <laughs> and, I, and I came here... A hundred years ago. <laughs> with with Amy's... Uh, Morgana's oh my gosh, she called me Amy. <laughs> oh, oh, when you put that eye jelly in red ink. Morgana's, Morgana's, Morgana's video. crack rocks. <laughs> you crackled quartz. Cro uh, crackled cross. Cross. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I broke your stride. Oh, God, so. then show us a little mercy <laughs> when it's Grandmaster Dragon's turn. <laughs> and he's not really a hundred years old. I oh, just got in a shipment of crackled quartz today that's very nice for chakra work. So let's just make that disclaimer. <laughs> I love it. So, welcome everyone, and thank you for coming. Tonight's topic is um, totems and spirit animals and animal guides. And we began this last night. The, our Thursday night group, Lovecast, is a meditational group that is run by Bob Wall uh, that goes to the church with a lot of us at First Metaphysical in Davison. But he was unavailable last night, so I kind of had to wing it for the meditation group. So I decided I would... Uh, do a guided meditation to help commune with an animal spirit to kind of tie it into and lead us to what's going on tonight. But working with totem spirits to me has been almost empowering as working with my actual spirit guides. And you can pull a lot of energy and insight and resource from them. So just to get a uh, a general understanding kind of where people are because in a group like this we're all going to be in very different places on our path and at very different levels of experience, awareness, curiosity. Who here um, knows, at least knows one of their totem animal spirits? No. I have a question about that. Is that different than your animal guides? No, totems, animal okay. guides, your animal spirit, all it's all the same. All the same. Okay. Totem is, is generally a word used more in Native American practice, right. okay. like totem pole and, and stuff, but they do all mean the same thing. Okay. So back to, here we are, people who know a totem and work with it. And, okay, so let's see. How do we, I will share, I know a few of mine, and um, I've known some longer than others. So I will share my first one. The crow is a totem of mine, not the raven. They're similar but different birds, and the raven's kind of bigger, stronger, cooler, I guess. But the crow, crow is my friend. And my experience and how I discovered that the crow was a totem of mine, because I, I've discovered them all through different means, but I discovered this in the physical. When I lived in an extremely haunted house, I had a murder of over a thousand crows that came to warn me on a very regular basis. Until one particular afternoon they spent all day and deep into the evening in my yard. It was the end of the winter and kind of a warm day, like early spring, late winter, very warm. And when my music went down in my house, because I was cleaning and I just do that with music on, so in between songs the music went down and I heard carrying on outside and I thought, oh, the children have 
it's had a long winter, you know, they're very excited. The weather's nice enough to get outside. But then a couple hours later when it was dark outside and I still heard the same ruckus at the same volume in between songs, I finally went and, and looked out the window and every tree in my yard had so many crows so close together on the branches that it looked like they had grown back black flapping screaming leaves. And I was scared at first. It took me grounding and centering and kind of opening myself up to communicate to figure out what was happening. And since I started working with the crow and calling upon the crow, it's helped bring messages to me that I'm seeking. And they've also helped send messages to other people for me. And they've given me just a lot of protection and guidance. And whenever I'm driving and I look up and I see a crow or two or three or four hanging out, I watch them for a moment. And if I watch them for a moment, they always kind of give me some insight. If they're hostile, I look toward hostility. Um, if they're peaceful and happy, I know I can expect that. And it's been just like point on. And it's only been since December of 2000. Seven that I moved in that house, so it would have been like late February, beginning of 08 that I've worked with uh, an animal totem. And so then I will go, just to change it up, we'll go this way. Um, you want to share one of your totems, how you found it, what this one? <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of my uh, energy or my focus is on Egypt. And uh, one of them... Uh, is bass. Bass is um, cat god uh, of the underworld. And um, it always guides me through the, the toughest times. And it shows me what happens through this, through different uh, channels. Like uh, the Nile is used a lot in Egypt. So it would be at, on the Nile, on a boat, on a ship, and my focus would be there and it would take me through different energies to guide me through all the hardships. So that's one of my guides. It's interesting because the, um, the raven has, has always been that, that totem uh, spirit for me. And I think the affinity started in the, uh, the ancient Celts believed um, very closely with, with the raven and the, the white raven um, would fly out from the Crystal Palace on Samhain and gather up the souls of the recent dead and bring them back. The other story that they often told is how the, the gods had turned away from the earth and we're ignoring mankind. Mankind had no light, had no heat. And it was the white raven that decided to take an ember from the hearth of the gods and bring it into the world. And had to go up through the stovepipe of the gods, going from the white raven to the black raven we see now. And it was the, the light bringer. <clears throat> and so right from the very beginning, I had the coven of the raven. We had raven mist. Uh, our tradition and then just a couple of years ago when I was, uh, well it was before I was in Ireland, I found that um, Jen Farah and I apparently are related through the Owen clan. And the Owen clan goes back to Owen Glendower who was the last Arc Druid of Wales and the emblem of the Owen clan was a raven and I didn't <laughs> know that all the way through. And we were drinking raven wine the night she told me. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of raven connections. A lot of raven connections. Can't ignore that. Mm -hmm. What I usually um, try to connect with is the wolf for um, with my job. Well, just trying to be alert from where I'm and so forth, from what I used to do job wise. So. I really don't know, to be honest. But the only thing I could ever, I love horses, but this never even came to me as would be a totem. 
when you talk about crows, the only connection I've ever had with crows, I love crows, I like to have one in a cage, and I've also felt like I could talk to them. So, I'm guessing crows, but I really don't They're know. super vocal, and one of the coolest facts I ever learned about a crow is they remember your face. So, like, if children mess with a bunch of crows at a cornfield, walking down the road to catch the bus, I don't know what these so-called children are doing, you know, but those, if those children walk back by, even if it's on a different road, the crows will recognize their face, and they don't forget nothing, because they're like, oh, I got something for you. You threw racks at me yesterday. Here I come. And they do talk. Like, if you listen to the cave and the, the crows caws and crackles and different things you they have so many different noises that they make way more than the average species of bird like they do like chatter and yeah, talk like I'll talk to them they'll talk back and I have a half dead tree in my backyard and it's full of crows half of the time so I guess it would be it I mean I never knew as it to be a totem but well, the different ways, and I'll have everybody share any way else that they know, because I know a lot of ways that people come into discovering what a totem spirit is for them. And one of them, the simplest of ways, is they just have a natural draw, attraction, interest, or likeness for this kind of animal. Uh, the example I use sometimes, one of my friends growing up, she loved horses. She always wanted the trapper keeper with horses on it, and she just loved horses. And we were small town kids. Nobody had a farm in town. You know, none of us owned horses, and she didn't really have any direct experience with them to spark this interest. She just had a love for them and a draw. Mm -hmm. And so then she joined, like, FFA in high school and stuff like that to, to work with them because she loved them so much. And I, I, one of my initiates in the craft had said to me, I, w I want you to give me hypnotherapy, Amy, so I, ca I can find out what my animal totem is and I can start working with it. And I'm getting ready to hypnotize this girl, and she's saying, please let it be an elephant, please let it be an elephant, please let it be an elephant. So I flicked her in her forehead and I said, Anna, it's an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it is, I don't believe in coincidence, I, I don't believe in any of that. But that's a really simple way. If you just have a, a natural love, attraction, interest, curiosity about an animal, it is most definitely, I would say, one of your totems. We do all have several, or the ability to have several. But another method is the hypnotherapy. There's, you know, when you open up your subconscious mind and you're using all your reserves and answering freely and allowing yourself to see more, it's a really effective way to discover what a totem is. I can take somebody on a spirit walk through woods and and have a collection of totems by the time they come through. Another way is through meditation, uh, just private meditation and, and taking your focus there to actively search it out like a vision quest of sorts. But for some people that's a struggle. So like last night we worked with a guided meditation where we turned the music on and lights down and candles and I spoke a script kind of similar to hypnotherapy, and people had great results running into their totems. I was even meditating. I was reading the script, and I discovered one of mine because it almost hit me in my face. The way it, I kept feeling my hair, like thinking my hair was on my face and trying to push it off. And at a part in the script where I needed to give everybody a few seconds to ingest the information, I closed my eyes. And then I felt it across my face again, and when I opened my eyes, I saw it fly by. So I'm very new to knowing that it's time for me to work with the owl. And I don't know a ton about it, and I was Googling last night. And I, I don't, and then, yes, and then Grandmaster Dragon had done this um, piece of artwork a while ago, and he couldn't find it. It was missing in action, missing in action. And we have this thing last night, and they go to Good Beans today, and he opens up his thing, and bam, there's his owl. Right. So he and Lady Cl Clarissa were like, oh, it showed back up just in time to go home with Morgana. That's so right. I love that. And that is that is the depiction of my, my newest totem. And it's great because all I could see when it came by color-wise is that it was white underneath. And it was brown on its back and, like, darker around its eyes. Like, it wasn't, like, the snow owl, you know, or anything 
particularly fancy like that, and then this depicted it so well for me, I was super excited to have it. So this is my latest gift of the day that I love and treasure. And I'll go with my, my other ones. Brother! Good, how are you? Let's, we got a seat right over there still open too, my dear. We're talking about totems, but you knew we would be doing that tonight. As you have a seat, do you want to tell everybody who you are? I'm Devon. Um, actually, uh, Amy's pupil. I've been here since the store started, since it was not even what you'll see right now. And uh, I help her do a lot of work. We do paranormal investigations, and I'm also an herbalist. also work with alchemy and uh, some other spiritual things. But uh, it's good to see everybody finally, because I've been MIA for quite a while, transportation issues, but um, I'm always spiritually present, so that's me. You've been gone so long, you're not all the way blind no more. It's <laughs> 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 time for a touch-up. <laughs> I kind of like the highlight. Touch-up. Oh, that's kind of cool. And the ends. Uh, this yeah, is it's a dog. Cool. It's going it's to get done. Oh, what is that? Yeah, it's going to be before. <laughs> So we're working on totems. Are you working with a totem at this time, Devon? I have actually four totems. I have a crow. I have two wolves that actually approached me in a dream. I was scared of them at first, but then this was weird because in the dream, I was getting ready to run from them. And they actually stopped and sat down like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I got all, I was. this is funny, I was on a refrigerator and there was like this desk and a board going straight toward the window. So I'm like, okay, let me back up for a minute and see what they want. And they came up to me with, you know, happiness and love. So those two, and then I have a viper. That's my other total. Beautiful. Beautiful. We do have, I brought out some books and uh, Brother Tom brought in a book so we can look up, you know, what these different totems. My printer wasn't working this morning. I found a great thing that listed a bunch of animals and all of their attributes. But we always have Lady Clarissa on the ready with the World Wide Web to find us any information or any answer we need. <laughs> that is our tech witch right there. So. Any good buys. That's we, the other thing I always ask. <laughs> Lady Guy first. We will, we will have the inside info. So how about you, Amo? Totals um, worked with them? Polar bear, turtle, and just came upon the owl on my birthday, actually. Awesome. <laughs> which was kind of cool. I, uh, the polar bear was from dreams. Every time I would have a dream that was any sort of intense, the polar bear, white, you know, just freaking appear out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the hell is this thing doing here? And that's when I started investigating and researching it because I've always been a dreamer. I've always had very vivid dreams. Um, so I just kind of started looking into it, and then the more I researched it, the more I came upon it, and then started getting into you know the metaphysical world and stuff. And a psychic told me that that was probably what it was. Turtles, I just have a natural draw to turtles. Always have. Went to speak to a shaman, and they confirmed that that was one of my totems. And then the owl, I did a guided meditation at school. And that kept coming in, and then on my birthday, which was December 29th, the owl flew into the backyard, and it kind of was watching me everywhere I was going, and I'm like, this is kind of creeping me out, like, why is it watching me out of all people? And we took a couple pictures, and it wouldn't leave, and it kept flying around, and my husband was like, well, maybe you should look into it, and ever since then, I've had that owl. Everywhere I go, I'll see an owl or a picture or a dream or somebody will mention it or post something on Facebook, and I'm like, okay, got to look into that more, so awesome. I will admit you are the first person I've ever met in my life that had the polar bear to call on as a totem. I've had that for over 20 years. Have you? In what life. information have you found or, or like their attributes or strengths or what they bring or have any? Protection and uh, fierceness, so don't. You're much like the wolf. Right, right. don't they're piss me off. Well, they're, 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 they're a polar bear on your hands. Genetically, <laughs> actually, they're just white grizzly bears. Right. So, they, she's such a cute dog. <laughs> I think your totem is a dog. But I can't, I, I haven't really researched it's it or just found much. Yeah. But maybe yeah. that's what I need to look so into. So, strength is, is what. Is it connected with you? Strength I would assume, this? yeah. The imagery is... I wild. would really be interested in looking into it more because um, on my days off from being a witch, I'm a National Geographic geek. 
and so I've learned some things about, I know there are some very unique things about polar bears. Like one of them I know, um, a polar bear mother, if her cub is in danger, and, and we want to think that all animals are like this because human beings tend to be like this, but in nature, if it comes to a life and death situation, most mothers will let their young perish to save themselves, but not the polar bear. The polar bear will get on a slab of ice and float off into eternity where they know they're going to die before they let their cub take that final sail alone. So that's like a super huge sense of conviction and commitment and mothering. And I think there's a couple of other like quirky things about polar bears that make them unique and strong in right. their own regard. And I've had, now that you mentioned that too, I've had a lot of people like when doing Reiki or getting readings done or anything, uh, the giraffe. Oh. This came up a couple of times as well. More so like what I've looked up for it, um, so, something to do with vocal, either not getting your words out or saying too much, which normally I have a tendency to not speak my mind when it comes to certain situations, so that's kind of interesting. It just clicked in too. Like so. a reminder, the mouth is a little too far away from the heart right. for you. Yep, so that's usually one of the chakras that I have to always work on is, is your throat chakra. So. The polar bears are symbols of survivor and endurance as they are most overcome seemingly insurmountable odds just to survive their environment. Their ability that's to be social and preserve yeah. their energy is legendary. They seem to carry on with them, with them a sixth sense that survival instinct more so than most species of the animal kingdom. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> so they can overcome some And that stuff. would make sense because about, yeah, it was around 20 years ago when my mom passed away and that's when it started showing up. And I went through hell and back and I was 18 years old. So, you know, maybe that was, came into my life for a reason and she was very psychic and... Coming to let you know you can overcome. Yeah, even I that never thing. even looked into that part, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Sweet! I'm, at least I can kind of shut that chapter now a little bit. Maybe I'm like, is that mine? But that's that was too little to be yours. Unless you've been busy since the last time I saw you. Hell no. Your girls did come in. That's when I was out there. Sharmisha, do you work with the totem animal? I haven't found any yet, although I will be honest with you. Lately I've been having a lot of birds coming to me on my back porch in my apartment and pretty much wherever I go. Mainly just wrens, but lately I've been having a lot of crows. Like one time I woke up and next thing you know I found a bunch of crows pretty much right by my window and they were all staring at me and going like, And just as soon as I left from my friend's place, there were a bunch of cardinals coming by. They wow. practically flew to me. I don't think I've ever seen more than one, one. cardinal at a time. Mm -hmm. There are like ten of them. Whoa. You work with meditation though, don't you? I'm starting to learn about meditation. And... When I left my mom's house after I came back from my trip on William's birthday, there were a couple of pigeons coming towards me, too. I haven't found my animal. Well, guy you yet, should but come in and hang out on a day that Will's going to hang out, and um, we'll try a guided meditation and see if we can't get you some clarity in that. Because I haven't found mine yet, but lately a bunch of birds have been coming to me. What kind of feelings do they invoke in you when they come? Are you excited to see their return? Freedom and love, I think. That's Beautiful. One basic Perfect. Thing I'm willing to gander that. That's definitely, you got a totem going on right there. So, cool. Let's work on that and explore that for you. One of my favorite things to do, and this is something you can do, Amy, too, with the polar bear, being that their strength is overcoming great odds and great obstacles. We have the freedom to ask our totems to go and to assist people that we care about in their times of need through different struggles and come back to us. 
things. What a powerful totem you have to be that's able to send. That's why my mom's sending it to me because and, that's about. But when now I, you can send it to your son. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> Because if he's going to be anything like me, oh boy. But at least he has me exactly. to be able to teach him. You know, See, I, I my mom passed away right as I was coming into my get abilities, or at least recognizing them. So by the time I was ready to ask her questions and have her guide me, she was already passed away. So I and, like, and I think that's why you're having the problems you're having is because he he does have oh, yeah. that gift. And the stronger the gift, the, the worse the attack. So just send him, send him that polar bear. I can do that. How about you, Walt? Do you work with a totem at all? Well, I've noticed a lot of uh, affinity for certain critters. It's kind of a list, though. I mean, it's certain birds, robins, um, Ravens, not crows, the chunkier ones. You can always tell about the feather color too, the way it shines. But then it's always, you know, the little garden snakes, you know, the ones you get in your yard all over, you know, get about that big. And then it's been a large list of insects. <laughs> bugs. Yeah. A lot of them. I gotta look at the bug totems. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of weird. Anything it, about bugs. It's bugs. weird. It's actually rather interesting the kind of information you can get off of a moth. I lie. I do know I things to. about bug totems. Every I know about a butterfly to, totem no and bugs, a dragonfly totem and a spider. And, so <laughs> yeah, there will be bugs at a house if I go there because it's usually moths and spiders. Well, and moths, like um, a light moth means someone's sick. Um, black moth or dark moth means there, there will be a death. <laughs> Especially if it's a large one. Yeah. But then there's you know, there's a the whole poem that goes along with crows. The, the, <clears throat> I think the main, the main thing to, to find your uh, uh, totem or try to find your guide is through meditation. So if you meditate and you focus on what you are uh, asking for, that it will come to you. So, I think if you do that. No, I need you to sit down. This is this is my good friend Karen and my part-time daughter Amanda. <laughs> They've both been victims of my richiness for many years. <laughs> However, with. Karen's work schedule and Little Miss Gorgeous's social schedule. We don't get to get him in here this often. I thought a bunch of hair just go out. Do you see that? I was like, well, I'm going to go over there. Yes. So, um, tonight to catch up, we're talking about totem, totem animals and different people's totems and different ways they use them, work with them for protection, strength, guidance, overcoming life obstacles and stuff. So that's just what we're doing. And Will has just shared with us that he's got a long list of bugs as totems, which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's mildly aggravating, but once you've you know, associated behavior with bugs, I can get every spider in my room to stay away from the bed. They awesome. stay in the corners. You stay there, you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good bargain. Yeah. Right? The reason why they all listen is the last time I had a bug in the bed. I roll over, I wake up, I go to the bathroom, come back. There's a spider uh, this big sitting right on my pillow. So it was a screw that. <laughs> of course, it was a wolf spider, so they're kind of stubborn. Bye. This is a topic every week, and if you ever have a topic, suggestion, or curiosity, stop by and hit me up when it will put it on the ground. Okay? Bye now. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Night, too. Night, too. Night, too. Okay, now start the CD, and what you do is you get up, and while we're all going around, I'm going to take up one chair. And then the person that right. can't sit down in chairs out, and then we're done. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So, and that brings us to Ian, who I just met last night, and you're not working with the totem yet, correct? Not yet, correct. Not yet. Okay, James, how about you? How about dragons? You're a dragon guy? And, yep. Guess who else is a dragon guy? And dragon and <laughs> turtles. Always like turtles. <laughs> who likes dragons? Oh. That's pretty much that's about it right now. So, um, Turtle is coming up amongst a lot of my friends here as of late. Who knows knows some information they can share with us about a turtle? Turtle is wise. I know that for a fact. I've I found them for a while. Peaceful. <laughs> yeah, very peaceful. They're <laughs> slow, of course, but... But does that mean that they offer and bring the strength of patience because that's, they're never in a hurry? That's how I take it because I'm never in a hurry. I'm always like, whatever, take my time. Basically, slow down, smell the roses. Oh, that would be why I'm a bird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I have some pictures I'll show you later. I was down visiting my mother, and there was a pond. Um, back out behind uh, the complex where she's at, <laughs> and as I was standing out there, um, the older folks there, I guess I'm an older folk now, the turtles loved them, and it looked like the Normandy invasion That's coming terrible. over toward me, and I showed Amy the, the photos. I have turtles all around me. That's <laughs> so funny. Up. They're right, and they're climbing my shoes, so I thought it was kind of a love thing. But it, I'll, I may have them on my phone. I'll show you later. It's really kind of cool. I, I do like turtles. We were, when I was young, we were up north kind of campers. Like, I had been to every Great Lake before I was six months old, but it took me till I was 34 to see the ocean kind of thing. And every time we went up north, I would come home with a pet turtle. <laughs> and my grandfather, and because I found it, and I always seem to find them in the road. Like, why are turtles? Trying to cross the road. They don't stand <laughs> a whole... with the chickens. Right. <laughs> 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 and they were painter <laughs> turtles or box turtles, and I would take them home, and I would always have to put them in the aquarium and stuff. And and I love the little turtles. But at my grandpa's store, <coughs> taking my mother up there, her sisters, my cousins. She's like, no, nobody ever brings home a stray anything. So they take you anywhere, and, and you you got to bring home a turk. I, I like the little turk. Squirrel cute. And skunk. Mm -hmm. and, well, I raised the squirrel. I raised the skunk. We actually were looking at the squirrel scrapbook today. Going down memory lane about my Jude. I just love my Jude. But this is what Animal Magic by DJ Conway has to say about the turtle or tortoise. The tortoise can be a land-dwelling or land-living pond. Should, what the heck is that? C-H-E-L-O-N-I-A-N. Shalonian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a vegetarian. Tortoises are members of the family whatever, which have, been, have unwebbed feet with stubby toes. The hind feet are often elephant-like. They have a plated nose, dome shell. They vary greatly in shapes. Turtles are reptiles. Um, there remain about 300 species in 12 families. They are slow moving, have tough, horny shells protecting their bodies. Turtles have powerful jaws with sharp edge, horny ridges. Well, we know all this physical stuff. A couple, right? couple paragraphs down. Okay, to the Hindus, the tortoise is a lunar creature. Their myths tell of a giant tortoise upon whose back stands an elephant who in turn supports the world. It is also the creature of Prahapati, the creator, who is also called Lord of Creatures. The Chinese also believed the tortoise supported the world and was an attendant of the world architect Pan Ku. The creature symbolized strength, endurance, and long <coughs> life and was called the Black Warrior. Other Chinese deities are connected with the tortoise, such as Wu Xian. Is that, did I say that right? Wu Shen, called the transcendent tortoise, and He Wang Mu. He Wang Mu. Pretty close. Okay. <laughs> the golden mother of the tortoise. Now, in Japanese legend, which I know you know nothing about, <laughs> the cosmic mountains were said to be supported by a tortoise. 
Among the Emu of Japan, however, this creature was associated with the god of the sea and was considered to be his messenger. In Arcadia, the tortoise was connected with the god Pan, while in Greece and Rome, it was the companion of Aphrodite, Venus, and Hermes, and Mercury. It is sacred to Ionanes in Sumeria, Sumeria and the people of West Africa. The tortoise symbolized feminine power and fertility. The Nigerians say the turtle represents the female sex organs. Um, it talks about... <laughs> um, well, there you go. Stop, I forgot. I don't mean to pause there dramatically. I right. <laughs> right. mine? <laughs> Images of turtles appear on Mayan... Stelle, but we do not know how much about their symbolism, much about their symbolism in the culture. To Aztecs, yep. creatures signified treachery and cowardly but boastful people. Native Americans associate the turtle with the elements of the earth and water. It symbolizes the energy of the goddess and the give and take cycle necessary for productive life. Its shell and it and is a physical shield and therefore a psychic and spiritual shield. The turtle symbolized material existence for the Masa Confusa in alchemy, and it represented natural evolution, slow and methodical. Superstitions evolved. The tortoise protects itself from venomous snake bites by eating marjoram. What? The right foot of a tortoise is carried on a ship. That ship will not be able to move very fast. Magical attributes, patience, long life, perseverance. Slow down, enjoy life more, allow your ideas time to develop properly. Visualize the shell as a spiritual shield to protect yourself from negative thoughts of others. Learning to relax and enjoy life, developing new ideas, psychically protecting yourself. And there's a little chant. Perseverance has the turtle as he patiently travels along. In his slowness, he misses nothing, for he hears Mother Earth's song. Patience, old wisdom, I'll learn from you. Deep forest secrets and earth magic truth. So, wow, that is awesome. What a great, what a great totem, you guys. So that brings us to you, Kyle, and you have a myriad of them. I have, uh, I think, eleven total now. The turtle sits with me, the raven sits on my shoulder, the snake travels through me, the eagle watches over me, the bear protects me, the wolf guides me, the, what is it called, Tetsu Right? The uh, white dragon? The, well, besides the white dragon. Tiger on the shoulder. Tiger on the The tiger is wrapped around in chains to my left hand. The, I just found this out, oh, two or three of them last night. Uh, I have a black and white koi fish that circles around in the back of my tattoo in the then I also have a white Siberian tiger, and then the white dragon appeared yesterday as well. So, I have a little squad. Awesome. So mm -hmm. I think you need to put together a totem journal. Something. Mm -hmm. So that you have a page, like, dedicated to each, or a couple pages, dedicated to each of your totems, mm -hmm. where you not only add things that you learn uh, from other resources about mm -hmm. them, but also things that intuitively come to you when you're, you're focusing on them or dealing with them. And then you will have yourself a wonderful, like personalized for Kyle only resource guide of which totem to call on for any obstacle or challenge or magical intent or thing that you're setting out to do. Okay. Because you found a significant number. So now it's time to, right. to work with them and right. have the, be all the benefits that they can bring to you all the time. Right. Very cool. How about you, my dear, my darling? I don't think we've talked about animal totems at all. I have a kangaroo. A kangaroo? Yeah. They're a rabbit. That explains why she's the, still jumpy. Yeah, no. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, kangaroos are, like, fierce, but, like, protective. And, like, that's totally me. And, like, yes, I'm also a snake. I don't know why, but I am. Because, like, I always dream about snakes. So, I don't know what that means, but I probably should look it up. Snakes are a pretty common totem. You can find a lot of information on them, I think. Um, wisdom, ancient wisdom, closeness to the earth. But, like, there's a huge list. I'm the kind of, I know a little bit about a whole lot of things kind of person. Not everything about anything. You know, there's always more to learn, I think. 
Everybody has multiple totem spirits and animal guides that they can work with. Call upon, use their energies, ask for their protection or guidance, uh, ask them to go and assist somebody else that you care about that's having a struggle. Uh, it's really, really kind of powerful to work with animals. I get messages from my crows all all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, you, 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 the whole story of the murder of crows thing and the scariness and there I had to go pick my son up from their house in Lapeer. And as I was getting ready to leave my middle boy, who's fifteen now, so he would have been like what, eleven something at the time, is standing on the porch with a snow shovel, like, ready to whack them off me if they tried to dive bomb or something, as I've got his little brother draped over my shoulder with the blankets, get to their house in Lapeer, drive all the way back. My son is like, you can take me back to Amanda's house because there's still hundreds here. My, he gets out of the van and he's like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. There are so many. This is crazy. And me and the, the kids that had just left are like, Dude, this is nothing compared to what it was when we left. This is mild. Don't you freak out. It'd be like wintertime, and she'd have probably a big, huge tree. The whole tree grows. Freaky. It makes you feel akin to the birds, does Yeah, it? They, get, they now kind of talk to me all the time. And I even have friends who are metaphysical that have said... Quit sending your stupid crows to wake me up. I know we got things to do today, but I, this is the third time there's some stupid crow. It's been outside my window trying to wake me up, and it's always the day that I got friends with you. So call your crows home. I'm awake. They go, I didn't really send them, but they knew they probably needed to go, so they just sent them. Alicia just said that the other day, how she had to get up and that crow was in her window. She was calling that. Yep. My crows will go. Go gather my people for me. Which is really, really cool. Twisted Wizard, Mr. Frank. Well, I don't know if it's a totem or not, but I know that the, that I always thought I was a black dragon. Um, because I always thought, like, wizards and dragons are interchangeable. <laughs> like, uh, a wizard is nothing more than a sleeping dragon. You know, you wake them up, make sure you wake them up on the good side of the bed, you know. Um, but I know it's black, because I think it, the black actually represents the spirit. And the strength of the spirit is, is the dragon. Um, I also discovered that I had a, last night I discovered that my other totem was a wolf. Another, now, I know I have more, I just don't know what they are as of yet. I um, played a silly game on the internet today that I, I answered a lot. They made you answer a whole lot of questions mm -hmm. about colors and what quality do you look for in a friend and like really obscure questions. And it told me that my one of my totems is a gray wolf. And uh, I don't know, but I'm going to explore that. Now, you are not my only friend that works with dragons. Mm -hmm. Dragon works with dragons. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise! And Tom works with dragons. Now, there's I know very little about dragons. I know and that owns the book. one hit. Well, really, I own a library, but <laughs> I own it for not just myself, but for other people. And I've had a thing about red dragons beginning to uh, happen and come into Could visions and different things <laughs> for me. Kind of like the guy that's sitting behind you. And the last couple. Did you did you send it after me or what'd you do, Frank? Did you send a dragon my way? Protection. Yeah, because I see the red dragon. But the different colors mean different things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does red dragon mean? Fire. Okay. So why doesn't anybody like the green dragon? I do. You like the green dragon? Yeah. Sometimes they're a little hard to get along with. See, I need to Just learn about dragons. I like the master dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's my total. Grand. <laughs> Grand <laughs> master. The blue dragon, right? <laughs> What's your favorite dragon? Blue dragon. The blue dragon? Ocean. Oh, yes. The water dragon. See, I'm a water sign. I'm a cancer sun sign, cancer moon sign. What is it with me and fire? 
Me too. Long really? as you don't say anything like, fire, we're fine. I cry myself right. to death over everything if I let me. Oh my goodness. There's no escape. June 28th. My son is June 27th. Oh, really? I'm July 19th. Oh, yeah? yeah. July 8th. You're July 8th? Awesome. I have a lot of cancers in my life. My Both my biological son that is 20 and my adopted son that is 20 are a Cancer sun sign born with their moon in Aquarius, both of them. And when I read the combination of it, they are both exactly just that. So that's totally off. Sorry, so my ADOS attention deficit. Ooh, shiny. Right. <laughs> Messes me up. Gets me off track sometimes. But how about you, brother Nick? What what totems are you working with? Uh, crow. Scorpion, and I just recently found out Black Panther, or awesome. Panther. Awesome. So. Are there Panthers that are not black? I don't know. Are there Panthers that are just leopards? They're just leopards? Yeah. So not all of them are black? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I know that there can be albinoism that happens in any animal, but right. I didn't know, generally speaking. It's cool. So, very cool. The Panthers got to be fiercely protective. Yeah, but yet, right. I've seen you hit fiercely protective mode. Yeah. And you're right, it is very panther -esque. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and How about you, Mary? Are you working with animals? Actually, I got four. I had the first one come to me, a small child, talk to me about the astral plane, a black flying dragon on the air sign. He taught me how to fly in the astral plane. And then I had another one. Uh, dolphin came to me while I was learning to swim because I had a fear of water. And then the Black Panther came to me at the time when I was I had children to protect them. I drawed on her to help me protect them. And anybody can tell you I was very protective of my children. And then I had a penguin who bring when I get upset, I draw on that. As a matter of fact, I got a stuffed penguin Divina gave me I sleep with when I need comfort. That is awesome. Penguins are very unique creatures. Very, very unique creatures. Like, they are one of the few animals in the wild that mate for life. And they're, they're not judgmental either. Matter of fact, I read an article about these two male penguins that became mates. They call the gay penguins. And when they, the zoo people separate them, they, one died. Oh, that, that breaks my heart. They, they couldn't put them back together before it. And, and actually, they they don't eat for half the year because uh, when they mate, um, the male is left with the egg. The female leaves to eat, and when she's done eating, she comes back, and the egg is hatched, and she takes over taking care of the egg. So they spend months of time without eating and pack on the weight while they're at sea, and they take turns taking care of the baby. I didn't know about the not eating thing, but I did know that the male penguin sets on the egg, and I think that's fabulous. I think that's awesome. I think you guys should try sitting on the egg one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sitting part. <laughs> but that, that's great to me. I mean, like, that's the most delicate representation of fatherhood that I see in the wild. Because, I mean, a lot of times in the wild, species have to keep the males away because once the babies come, they'll eat them. They're horrible, you know. Or, uh, Seahorses are a good example. Are they? They tend them. Yeah, lions, if um, there's a change in uh, the leader of the pride, uh, when uh, any cubs are born that aren't his, he will immediately kill them. And then when the female goes back into estrus, he breeds her so that all the offspring will be his. I'm so bringing a dozen eggs in <laughs> Right? We should have heard well. And Davina, you know a totem of yours that you've begun to work with. Do you want right. to share that? Well, since I've been going through what I through this transition, and that my uh, I'm really close with the butterflies because to me it represents like going from it from one transitioning into something else. So I've been working real close with that right now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the butterfly is great. It brings elegance, beauty, and it's representative of moving through a chrysalis state, transformation, a change, and, and evolving. So that's beautiful and perfect for you at this time. And one of our adopted our adopted daughter that we kind of adopted. She took me out one time, took us one time, and uh, I have a tattoo on my shoulder back here of the butterfly. The little feet, the hawk. Awesome. And the hawk is a totem for you as well. <sighs> Protection watching over. Very nice. And Jessica just relocated. She told us the kangaroo. So that, uh, that brings us to, to you, Francine. So awesome. The images that you got just instinctively seeing the tortoise are so dead on. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. How like spirit always speaks to you so accurately when you make that connection. Well, those ones are kind of new. I I did feel really drawn to um, the old turtle for some odd reason, which is weird because it hasn't been anything I've been drawn to in the past. That was just like something I recently got, and I put it with other things that were important to me. So um, I I wasn't really surprised. I was actually excited, like I was saying in the meditation that we did yesterday, to see the turtle. That's why I kind of went leaping for the door to see the entryway, to see the turtle, and I was surprised by the owl. Um, and that was one of those, uh, when I meditate, there are things that I create. I can feel my mind creating, and there are other things that appear, and it was something that appeared, and those are usually the most profound things in meditation. Um, so I'm kind of working with the... Which is weird because I, I was thinking to myself that I was not going to get into owls because it's really popular right now. And a lot of people are talking about owls and getting owls and um, I don't know if it's like a renaissance of the 70s or what. <laughs> but there was a lot of owl imagery people were asking me for them. And um, so it's funny that something that I had decided I wasn't going to do had come to me in a meditation. So. But um, probably my biggest... Uh, one that I have an affinity to. I don't. I haven't had it come to me in meditation, which is disappointing. But um, I have a total affinity to cats, and they come to me when they're hungry, when they're hurt, when they're at home, when they need help with their kittens. Um, my house is surrounded. It's like the cat zone. They know to come there. They come up to my door, um, and I always have a cat, and I get a lot of comfort. And I feel like certain cats that I have had were. Um, taught me how to love in times when I felt damaged. And then um, my cat that I have now, um, I feel like uh, when I first got him, he was really mean. He was older, he was six. And uh, he, um, I kind of rescued him at the age of six. And he was really angry for a while. And now he's just so blissfully happy and sweet. And I feel like, um, I'm helping in his soul evolution, like how my previous cat helped in mine. Awesome. So, like reciprocity. And, mm -hmm. and I have such a love um, for Bass. To me, she represents um, understanding and magic and, and kind of a sense of humor about things, like uh, a dark sense of humor, but a sense of humor. <laughs> To me, she's smart, she's sexy, and edgy, and, and different, and well, I, confident. I guess I kind of separate the segment vast aspects, and, and I focus more on vast, because to me, she's very friendly and magical, and I don't know, that's just my vision of her. Everybody, I think, has, goddess has a thousand faces for right. anyone that sees her, so that's, that's uh, my biggest one is vast. Awesome. Very, very cool. Do you have a favorite animal? or? Um, I actually have a ton of favorite animals. Awesome. <laughs> and more about it. A lot of the time when I was around six to eight, I always used to have a dream of a lion every day. And lions are like one of my favorite animals, so I think that's probably one of my totems. And I'm starting to think a hawk is too, because at my school, like a lot of hawks have been flying over me, and like a lot of hawks have been going around. We have a field, but like the grass is so short that nothing can hide there. We have forests all around us, and they're not going to them. They're coming around me, and they play around a lot. So I've been thinking a hawk has been like one of me, maybe a totem. I remember the first time that we stopped here at the store on the way home we saw one that flew right in front of the car on the other side. And then um, another one 
is probably a cat because like she said that um like I've always like any cat like my cat she was evil like <laughs> I'm literally she evil. Was. She could go around nowhere and attack your foot, eat no for no reason. And like everybody was about to the point to get rid of her and I said no we're not doing that and like about a year later she like, she came up and I felt like I saw her like that whole time through and like kind of just like guided her through what she should do. Like help her out. Awesome. Awesome. Well that is super exciting. The hawk thing that you're noticing that that being open to seeing things and, and signs and communication that the universe gives to you is such a beautiful thing. It will you will mature a lot faster than I did. That's awesome. And your mom's on her way to growing up to being the creepy cat lady, so you kinda of have to like <laughs> <laughs> I already claim it. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I'm a, I'm a creepy cat chick too. Like anybody has a stray, they're like, Ah, oh, take it to Amy. She'll take care of it. <laughs> I have four. <laughs> I, have four um, I was born in the, the year of the fire wars, which um, in the Chinese astrological calendar comes once every 60 years. I've always had a um, very strong affinity towards horses. Um, anytime I'm around a horse, um, it's like I'm, I'm in heaven. And uh, I have had the pleasure of handling many horses that other people say were uh, unmanageable and found myself to be able to get them to do what I wanted to do very easily. Um, and also with uh, the Chinese zodiac, the dog, and uh, the tiger or cat uh, is considered the triangle of affinity. And I have always uh, been very uh, blessed with, you know, the ability to uh, handle dogs and cats and enjoy them in my life. Uh, as I've gotten older, um, birds of many types have, you know, come around. Uh, but a lot of times when uh, I'm driving um, hawks and uh, this time of year, herons, blue herons, so I'm, I'm blessed with, uh, you know, many animal friends. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And you work with them regularly and have for a while, so that's great. Well, how about you, Andrew? I know you probably haven't gone into deep, profound meditation and found a totem animal, and that's fine. But do you have a favorite animal or one you're I'm going to try it. Yeah? Yeah, like a couple of wolves, a shark, maybe the polar bear. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, definitely look up what strengths each of them possess. And really, just like in prayer, you, you can call on the gift of their that strength, that attribute, to be with you. You can call on the strength of that polar bear to be able to overcome any obstacle laid before them tomorrow when you go into your circuit. They will be with you, they will guide you, protect you. So knowing is half the battle. Once you kind of figure out, and, and sometimes we realize we knew all along, we just didn't verbalize it, vocalize it, accept it, or whatever. But now you've kind of said it out loud. So now you have the freedom to say, polar bear, come to me. Be with me now. Lend me your strength. Give me your guidance. Help me overcome this obstacle. You said shark? Yeah. Did you say shark? Tattoo of a shark. Well, uh, in Hawaii, uh, Manu. Manu is a god. God, uh, he's a shark, but he can turn himself into a human. So he 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 guides uh, the people to hunt fish and protect them when they give uh, offerings and understand that he's not to harm. So they 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 call upon Mangu. So if you are walking in, just say. Mom will be around me. Okay? And that is why I love to have friends who are way smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Anna? You, you work with totems? Well, I have an earth dog. That's the only one I have right now. Awesome. Sometimes. It's, like it's strange, you know, an earth dog. 
trying to figure out what type of bird they are. Well, that's, that's not you strange know? because in Hawaii it's Poki Kamano Manu. Poki Kamano Manu is a spirit guy. And he's, he's a dog, a giant dog that protects people coming across the mountains in, in Hawaii. And uh, they pray to him and ask him for guidance. And through his spirit, they get to their safety by believing in Poki Kamanu Manu. Because I'm the protector. Okay. That's, so that's, 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 another, that's, another, that's another thing that we learn in the Hawaiian uh, legends. We learn the legends and the, the stories and the, 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 the backbone of the Hawaiian. Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Dre. It's a Rottweiler. <laughs> My hair is just standing all up. He just made it all perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And this is why we come together, and I love that. And how about you, Trace? Um, well, I've always been told that we come from the family of crows, is what my grandpa used to say. But I never really could associate with that, you know. Um, but back in 87 it was, um, I was up north in Roscommon and I was in the woods and a raven came up and just landed like right there close to me and I carried on a conversation that was like weird for me because I didn't know really what was going on and at that point every time I'd go up there, go to the same spot, that raven would come. So for years I knew that was it, but recently, about a year ago actually, I did a uh, guided meditation and I went in and the polar bear came to me and told me, because I, I went to the glaciers, I don't know why I chose that path because it gave you a different path, and the, the polar bear told me, you're on the wrong path, go back. So I was like, what the heck, you know, it didn't really make sense to me and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just, I don't know. So I kind of like backed up out of the meditation and I just quit. And then I went home, and a couple days later I decided to do it again. And um, going back into the same way, I wanted to head towards the glaciers, but I remember the polar bear said, Don't, you know, you're going the wrong way. So I said, well, I'll go this way. And the polar bear started yelling, telling me to come that way. And when I got there, there was, it was still snow, it was snowy mountains at that point, and three wolves appeared. And... Um, I don't know, I was in that meditation for a really, really long time with those wolves, and um, they've just kind of been there, like, next to me, you know, I, I sense them all the time, so, but um, I don't see the raven anymore, because I don't go up north, and I just don't call them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I should. <laughs> <laughs> I think their focus, you know, in our life, we drift back and forth from awareness and unawareness and, and needing the strengths of this particular one at this time and needing the strengths of that particular one at another time. So I think it's a very ever-changing process, just like our own personal spiritual path and development and growth. You know, these, these relationships evolve and change and grow and just like with anything else, though, I find the more that you work with it and the more that you call upon it, the the stronger you get with the connection and with what they have to bring into your life. And I have noticed, too, um, I would say, like, the whole month of March, and this has really never happened to me before, but every time, just before I get to get on an expressway, somewhere there will be a hop close by within minutes of me getting on the expressway. So I've noticed that like almost every time when I leave here, I go down to Dort Highway, get on the expressway, and within minutes, there it is. Um, just every time, even when I'm doing deliveries. So I've seen them a lot lately, so I want, I've been wondering about that too. So, yeah, Sounds them. like a new one introducing itself yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And James just played magical chairs. How about you, RJ? Do you work with a totem? Um, yeah, yeah. Not really? Uh, um, I'm always an animal lover. Yeah. And, um, I get along really well with any of the cat family. Okay. So, especially black cat. You know, my, my cat totem is specifically a black cat. <laughs> And it weaves between my feet like a, almost a figure eight as I walk whenever it's with me. Which is funny because when my real cat does that, I'm not so graceful. 
<laughs> but when I'm in meditation and it's my totem spirit that is doing that, we move with the synchronicity that is flawless and almost like a dance. And it's just like I'm here. I am I'm at your feet and I am here and I I love that. But your spirit cat doesn't take up as much room as Osiris. No. <laughs> no. My familiar and my my animal totem are a different nature. Now my familiar runs my house, just so everybody knows. He's not quite a year old and he is about this long and it's about this big to wrap your enormous. He's massive. And he has he has thumbs. So he's like, watch out, human race. I've just leveled the playing field. Um, and uh, he runs he runs the world at our house. But um, so I, th I think it's great that we were all able to share and get information from each other. This is, we're getting close to 8 o'clock, so I don't want to keep it in a formal forum too much longer so everybody has a chance to chat and things before we have to go. The books are up here. So guys, feel free to look up any animal that you want to. Uh, understand that you can call it to you. Understand that you can ask it for its strengths, its attributes, and its um, what it has to offer. But also understand that you can send your totem to help and assist with people that you love. I send my totems to distance heal when I can't go. I have friends all over the country and, and growing to be all over the world. And my totems can go places that I can't. So I utilize them for that. There's also the different ways to discover them through a natural affinity and attraction, through meditation, guided meditation. Believe it or not, there's so many great guided meditations on YouTube that I don't know for certain because I, I haven't looked, but I'm also all, almost willing to bet that if you say guided meditation for animal oh, spirit yes. guide there's, or whatever, it will bring kinds. one up and you can go ahead and go into meditation on your own and that voice will direct you to find one. And then there's always the hypnotherapy option and I know like a handful of hypnotherapists where uh, they're up here at the psychic fair and when we do the healing fairs and things like that. But just before we release, I want to say thank you everybody for coming. Thank you everybody for sharing. Um, we all bring great energy and learn and expand and grow together. And not only does that help us get to know the people around us more, it helps us get to know ourselves more and better as well. One, more, one thing. Every um, tonight was totems, but you can also have other worlds. Like some of some talked about the dragons. You can have gargoyles, griffins and all that also. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I just moved forward with, I thought everybody knew that dragons and fairies and gargoyles and things are real. Unicorns, anybody got a unicorn? Because I've almost fallen off my unicorn a couple of times. No, yeah, no, you saw the Facebook like, picture, huh? Yeah. 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 yeah, but I'm looking for a Pegasus. Somebody told me I was delusional, I almost fell off my unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amy, that's what we love yourself. about you. You're delusional, we're all delusional. But perception is reality. This is as real as it gets. Mm -hmm. So love and light, guys, to everyone. Um, there's coffee made. I started the pot before we got going. So there's some coffee over there that you can help yourself to. Go ahead and take a look at the books. Son of a Witch Crafting.